Not every police procedural needs to be gritty and hard-boiled. Better file me under E for edgy. What? Cornrows. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Brooklyn Nine-Nine moments. My stomach is in flux. For this list, we're taking a look at the most memorable moments from this Golden Globe winning comedy series. I have 90 from the man with the face at table four. This is terrible. You don't know what you're doing. Adam Sandler? Yeah, that's right. I collect antiquities. I'm a serious person. Number 10, Amy's late to work. 901, Amy Santiago is officially late for the first time ever. All right, let's do this. Who's got theories? Despite her punctual nature, Detective Amy Santiago finds herself running late to work one day. Each of Amy's co-workers tries to guess why she's tardy. Some of their theories are perfectly plausible, like her three alarms didn't go off. Others are a bit more contrived, involving abduction, alternate dimensions, and mole man sex. Maybe she fell into another dimension where she's interesting. Arriving exactly 70 seconds after 9 o'clock, Amy is forced to explain herself. Turns out there was a long line at the bank, which Captain Holt accurately predicted. Santiago, you will tell us, and you will tell us now. Holt could not be more pleased with himself, cheering victoriously as if he just won the lottery. There was a problem at the bank. Hot damn! Number nine, Sharon's water breaks. Sharon is happy, and Captain Holt has no idea where she is. Damn, we are good at stashing pregnant ladies. While Terry's in the middle of an investigation, Jake and Gina look after his very pregnant wife, Sharon. This entails keeping her away from Captain Holt, who isn't exactly the best conversationalist. That's one way to put it. Ah, Sharon, nice to see you. You look so big, like a mighty truck. Hiding Sharon becomes increasingly difficult, however, when her water breaks. Jake's response to this unexpected development is beyond priceless. My water just broke. Don't worry about that, we'll just get you another one. Oh, you mean your body water. That's much worse. From there, the episode turns into something of a juggling act, as Jake attempts to comfort Sharon, distance Holt, and deal with an angry horde of perps on Thanksgiving. It's a classic example of a little problem that keeps escalating out of control, leading to one big laugh after another. Everyone, I'm gonna need you all to clear the room. This woman is having vaginal contractions. It's just contractions. You don't have to add vaginal to it. Number eight, I do my job and I do it right. All right, I see what you're trying to do, but it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna arrest him. I'm gonna arrest him! You won't back up? Yes! They may be complete opposites in many ways, but Detective Jake Peralta and Captain Ray Holt are equally passionate when it comes to serving justice. But someone has been painting wieners on squad cars, and apparently they won't stop until there's a penis drawn on every cop car in Brooklyn. After learning that a notorious graffiti artist is Deputy Commissioner Podolsky's son, Jake is given two options. He can either arrest the bratty hooligan or let him off the hook. Jake ultimately chooses to uphold the law, even if it means putting his career at risk. Trevor Podolsky, you're under arrest for vandalism and destruction of property. Podolsky vows to make life miserable for Jake and Holt. This is not the first time Holt has stood up to corruption, though. In a few straightforward yet badass words, Holt lets the commissioner know that it will take more than threats to prevent him from doing his job right. Damn, son. You know how I'm still standing here? Because I do my job. And I do it right. Damn, son! Don't say son. Number seven, Gina's dance. Fine, I guess I can help you with those at-risk kids. <laughs> Whether she's spouting classic one-liners or showing off her outrageous dance moves, Gina Linetti is always a riot. When Amy and Rosa are unable to connect with a group of troubled teens, Gina steps up as an unlikely counselor. Rosa and I think it would be great if you talked to the kids. Mm, I thought only cops could help. In this case, not being a cop might actually be better. Taking center stage, she speaks to her audience through the language of dance. Gina aims to inspire the at-risk kids, but they mainly just find her behavior weird. I think I speak for everyone when I say your weird dancing was just weird. Fortunately, she quickly wins them over upon sharing the perks of being a cop. Cops make $52,000 a year. You never have to stop at a red light. And you get to carry a gun. Who wants in? Boom, 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 boom. Although Gina's dance with Terry had plenty of pizzazz, this routine simply made us floorgasm. Don't look so sad. Floorgasm is just a rudderless dance ship without you. Number six, upsy downsies. Turn around, clear. 
Since Die Hard is his favorite movie of all time, it isn't surprising that Jake often fantasizes about being an action hero. During a paintball simulation, Jake channels his alter ego of Rex Buckingham and prepares to win coolest kill. Rex Buckingham, at your service. That was majestic. Custom knee pads to help me win coolest kill. As Jake and Boyle show off their signature moves, the inept Scully suggests holding your gun upside down as opposed to holding it sideways. Although this seems like an unbelievably stupid idea, it actually gets Jake out of a tough spot. Cornered by the opposing team, Jake starts to lower his weapons. Then at the last second, he takes his enemies down by going upsy downsies. Yes, Scully, I went upsy downsies, and none of you will ever speak of it ever again. His final move manages to be funny while also being kick-ass. Maybe Scully could give John McClane a few pointers. You can use that. That will never happen, my American friend. Number five, Holt and Wunsch. Hello, Raymond. Ray Holt habitually maintains a professional demeanor. However, Deputy Chief Madeline Wunsch knows how to press his buttons. Whenever these two are in the same room, Holt can't help but unleash all of his animosity towards Wunsch. Of course, even then, he still speaks in a hilariously monotone voice. But if you're here, who's guarding Hades? When we first see these bitter rivals together, Holt compares his superior to Hades. And the captain has plenty of other insults lined up for his arch nemesis. Let's begin. On another occasion, he attempts to take the moral high ground, but cannot resist dishing out his epic pun. Once time is over. Boom, did it! <laughs> Had it both ways. Since Holt is usually seen as the precinct's stern father figure, it's always fun when he shows off his immature side, especially when Wunsch is involved. You embarrassed yourself in front of Derek Jeter. Number four, Boyle gets shot in the butt. Oh, what happened? Not my dad. You saved my life. On the surface, Detective Charles Boyle might seem like a bumbling doofus, and sometimes he admittedly is. Regardless, he tries his best and will always come through for his friends. While pursuing a dangerous criminal, Boyle demonstrates his courage and dedication by taking a bullet for Rosa. It's definitely one of Boyle's most heroic moments, although his gallantry is kind of overshadowed by the fact that he got shot in the buttock. Will's a hero, and so is his butt. Nevertheless, Boyle is still rewarded for his bravery with the Medal of Valor. Since this is Charles we're talking about, though, it's only fitting that a horse named Sergeant Peanut Butter steals the show. Oh my god, Charles is getting the same medal as a horse. Number three, Full Boyle. You're going full Boyle. Charles Boyle has the tendency to rush into relationships, planning extravagant declarations of love after only a few days. As Jake puts it, he goes full Boyle. I borrowed the waiter's phone when you weren't looking and bought me and Vivian plane tickets to Rome. What? We leave in two hours. To make sure Boyle doesn't go overboard with his latest girlfriend, Jake decides to accompany them on their next date. Boyle naturally takes things too far when he decides to buy an engagement ring on the spot. Jake immediately snatches the ring out of Boyle's hand, leading to a standoff with pepper spray. My girl, I'm gonna pepper spray you! Pepper spray me, I will pepper spray you! As Jake disposes of the jewelry, both simultaneously spray each other. In addition to being totally hysterical, this scene exemplifies Jake's affection for Boyle and how far he's willing to go to help his best friend. Crap! 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 Number two, Holt wins the bet. Last year, you bet me that you could steal my Medal of Valor. And you did. In the show's first Halloween episode, Jake catches Holt off guard by stealing his Medal of Valor and winning their bet. But now it's time for round two of our Halloween bet. The two make a similar bet the following Halloween, as Jake tries to swipe Holt's wristwatch. This time around, though, Holt thinks several steps ahead. In the end, Holt reveals that he's been plotting his revenge for the past year. Enlisting help from the rest of the precinct, Holt not only tricked Jake, but sent him on a wild goose chase as well. So how'd you convince the whole squad to betray me? What'd you offer them? I asked them if they wanted to embarrass you, and they instantly said yes. Not gonna lie, that turns me on a little bit. It's a hilarious turn of events that nobody saw coming, delivering a pitch-perfect punchline. 
Holt truly earns the title of Amazing Police Captain slash Genius. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I was hula hooping. Kevin and I attend a class for fitness and for fun. Oh my God. I've mastered all the moves. The pizza toss, the tornado, the scorpion, the oopsie doodle. <laughs> Okay, well, at least it was just the keypad. None of the snacks got messed up. Whoa, go! Whoa. Number one, Amy loses the bet. Peralta. Santiago, the bet ends today, are you ready? Throughout the first half of season one, Jake and Amy have an ongoing bet involving who can make the most felony arrests. If Amy wins, she gets Jake's car. If Jake wins, Amy has to go on a date with him. For in eight hours, I will win the bet and take Santiago on the worst date in the history of the world. It's a close race, but Jake pulls an upset at the last minute. He takes his victory to the extreme with music, dancing, and confetti. Jake wins, Amy loses. Look! Jake even gets down on one knee and asks the defeated Amy to go on the worst date ever presenting her with a $1 ring. Will you go on the worst date ever with me? You have to say yes. Yes. She said yes! Aside from arguably being the funniest moment on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, this is also the beginning of a beautiful romance. Guess you can add it to your list of bad dates. Nah, it still goes on the good date list. You know, because we caught the bad guys. Do you agree with our list? Nope, and he's already texted me back with a top 10 list. What's your favorite Brooklyn Nine-Nine moment? <laughs> For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Eh, that was not a request.